uh, so good morning guys this is uh, riya shetty from jitendra chauhan college of law and uh, today the topic that i'm going to be talking about is legal rights of rape victims uh, so let's start with the topic whether it is the recent 2020 hathras gang rape case or the 2018 nirbhaya gang rape case or any other rape case that hasn't made it to the newspapers and hence we weren't even aware of it it is the indian girl that suffers in the name of these vicious crimes india is a dangerous place to be a woman men here have been raped have raped 8 month old babies to a 100 year old woman it is this rape culture in which women are told how to dress to avoid inviting trouble and being slut shamed normalizing the male predatory behavior on a global platform india ranks the third position as the country with the most number of rapes after usa and brazil the 2018 national crime record bureau report recorded 34000 rape cases of which there is hardly one rape which is recorded every 15 minutes in our own country while the conviction rates is only 27% almost 54% of the cases in india go unreported realistically speaking this means that only 46 women of every 100 find the courage to report that they have been sexually assaulted and of them only a few are even deliver justice the the real number probably even way higher never gets captured as many rapes go unreported barring under shame confusion and fear many of these rape victims aren't even aware of the legal remedies that are made available at their disposal and hence with such a serious state of affairs it becomes extremely important to create awareness in relation to the six legal rights of rape victims which i intended to do via this write up uh just a second guys yeah so uh these are mainly the six legal uh, rights which are available to rape victims in our country which not many people might be aware of because of uh, mostly education which is not made available to them so i shall briefly talk about each right uh, so the first one is right to zero fir in simple words any person having any knowledge regarding the commission of a cognizable offense must communicate such information to the police such communication is known as first information report whose evidentiary value is greater than any statement recorded by the police during investigation and the provisions for recording the same are specified under section 154 of the indian criminal procedure um so in simple words a zero fir mainly refers to an fir that is filed at any police station irrespective of the place of crime or the jurisdiction that it falls under that is eventually transferred to the original police station having co- competent jurisdiction upon conducting preliminary investigation the main idea behind this is to institute a jurisdiction free fir so this is one right mainly which is available to rape victims which they should be aware of and uh, as law students or part of the legal framework it becomes very important for us to create awareness on such uh, topics the second one is right to free medical treatment in any private hospital so every rape victim has the right to immediate and necessary medical treatment free of cost not only in government hospitals but uh, in the best private hospitals of our country no hospital could deny medical treatment or even demand money for the same under section 357 of crpc all hospitals whether public or private shall provide immediate medical treatment free of cost to any offense which is covered under certain specific sections of ipc and shall immediately inform the police of the same then the third very important one is the right to the no finger test uh, sorry the no two finger test when it comes to medical examination of the rape victim the two finger test in the earlier times was a standard of conducting forensic examination the main aim of which was to know the medical history of the victim or whether the the victim was habituated to sex but after a point when this test was being used as a medium of character assassination of the rape victim it had been abolished uh 
So the third one, so the third right mainly says that the rape victim has a right to not allow themselves to be put in for the two finger test, which is against, it, it's more like character assassination. They have already been through so much, so they don't need to go through that as well, right? So the fourth one is harassment free and time bound medical examination. Rape victims have a right to harassment free medical examination as per convenience. Under section 154 of CRPC, information that is given by the victim against whom the offense is committed or attempted shall be recorded by a woman police officer. Under section 157 of CRPC, the woman's statement shall be recorded at a place of her choice by a woman police officer in the presence of her parents or guardian. Under section 164 of CRPC, the recording of statement is not permitted in public order in order to avoid a situation of the police getting any possible chance of tampering with uh, any of the evidences which are made available to them. Fifth is the trial with full dignity and uh, speed and protection. So Section 26A of CRPC states that certain offenses under IPC shall be tried as far as practical by a court presided by a woman. Section 327.2 of CRPC states that the injury and trial uh, in relation to rape shall be conducted in camera provided such trials are conducted by a woman judge or magistrate. Section 327.3 of CRPC states confidentiality and no publication of proceedings in relation to rape cases with respect to the name and addresses of the party. And the last one is the most important one, which is the right to claim compensation. Section 357A of CRPC talks about uh, mainly the victim compensation scheme, which is based on the Supreme Court guidelines that requires every state government in coordination with the central government to prepare a victim compensation scheme that helps victims or their dependents to claim a compensation for such losses or injuries. A compensation of up to a minimum of 4 lakhs and a maximum of up to 7 lakhs can be granted and if found inadequate, more compensation could be claimed by the rape victim. In Serena Mondal alias Piada versus the state of West Bengal and ORS, compensation it had been given under Section 357 of CRPC as a fundamental right of Article 21 here had been violated. Therefore, the state had to grant compensation in this case. So as we see in our country like India and now even in lockdown, things have started getting out of hands. Uh, our country was anyway never termed as a safe place for women, but now, now it's even got worse with time. So in such cases, when so many rapes drastically taking place, I think it becomes very important for women to be aware of their legal rights, which is made available to them at their disposal. Uh, so that not only can they fight for themselves, but it also gives them a confidence in their own existence. So thank you so much. So this is all I had to say for now. Thank you.